This beginner blender tutorial will help you go from 0 to 60 with your apparel project. For context, I'm using a MacBook Air and Logitech external keyboard. Let's begin. How's your blood pressure? Is it high? Good, let's go. This is a map of Blender. We have modes, an outline, tools, and a timeline. Let's look at modes. You'll mainly be using object mode, edit mode, and sculpt mode. This is the Z, X, and Y axis. Hotkeys for object mode. A. Select all. G. Grab. R. Rotate. S. Scale. E. Extrude. Nothing. Shift D. Duplicate. Hotkeys for edit mode. Blender is just hotkeys and menus. A. Select all. G. Grab. R. Rotate the hand. S. Scale the tiny hand. E. Extrude. Shift D. Duplicate. All right, let's import object. Download Blender from blender.org. Go to TurboSquid, create an account. No worries, it is a very respectful site. Search for man. Then select free in the filter. The free ones are checkered throughout, so I like to shorten the panel so all the free ones are on the side. Now go halfway down the page to the detailed man. Download. Select the OBJ file. Open up in Blender. If this is your first time opening up Blender, it's going to ask you for the aesthetic you want. Go for something easy on the eyes so you can look at it for long periods of time, like this darker one. Change nothing else. Great. Let's get into Blender. Select General. Delete the default cube by right-clicking. Selecting Delete at the bottom of the menu. Go to File, Import, Waveform. Select the OBJ file. Housekeeping. With the trackpad, two finger pinch to zoom out, two finger spread to zoom in, two finger drag to pivot around the center, shift and two finger drag to glide in a linear fashion. Remember our Blender map? Outline, tools, timeline. The outline with all the objects in the scene. Tools where we do fancy stuff and the timeline for animation. Let's click the modes. Make sure your man is selected with a left click. This is object mode. This is where we can work with the entire object as a whole, and many objects at a time. This is edit mode, where we can work inside an object. If it's orange, it is selected. Right click to deselect. Left click to select a vertex. G to grab it. Right click to deselect. Sculpt mode. I usually use the smooth tool and the grab tool. For sharper mark making, I usually work in edit mode. The hotkey to toggle between modes is tab. If you're on a laptop, then you probably don't have a numpad. The numpad hotkeys allow you to see the scene straight on, the side, from above, etc. To allow the numbers at the top of your keyboard to work like the numpad, go to Edit, Preferences, Input, and Emulate Numpad. This is one, orthographic view from the front. Now let's scale our model. Select the measuring tool on the left side. Our man is six and a half meters tall. Too big. Too big. Let's measure two meters. So two blocks tall. Get rid of the measuring tool by selecting the arrow. S to scale the model and left click to apply. Make him two meters or two of these blocks tall. G, C to grab on the Z axis and left click to apply. Enemy object, time to enemy. Left click and drag the bar at the bottom. Put the thingy at zero. Make sure the man is selected, hotkey I. Select rotate on the menu. A keyframe appears on the timeline. Put the thingy at 100. R, C, 180. Left click. Hockey, I. Choose rotate on the menu. Put the thingy at 200. R, C, 180. Left click. Hockey, I. Choose rotate on the menu. Select all the hotkeys by either dragging a select box over them or hit A. Drag the keyframes 20 frames over so that the cloth simulation has time to settle. Right click interpolation mode. Linear. We want the movement to be consistent. Now the model rotates. Note on the right side of the timeline the numbers indicating the current frame, the start frame, and the end frame for your animation. Hit spacebar to play and pause the animation. Place the thingy back at zero. To model this man's outfit, go to add menu or hotkey shift A. Hover over mesh and then select plane. The plane is now horizontal. R, X, 
90, left click. G, C, left click. S, left click. G, C, left click again. Tab into edit mode. A to select all, Shift D, Z to duplicate and scoot down. Hotkey 3, A, select all, G, Y, and move the plane in front of the man. Hotkey 1, select the X-ray toggle so that the objects are transparent. You can start moving the vertices one by one, or you can select the X option at the top so that the vertices move symmetrically. Loop cut and sustain drag to place the horizontal cut. Shift D to make the sleeves. Loop cut and sustain drag to place the horizontal cut. With the knife tool, cut out the legs. Just delete the other half with the select box. Right click delete. Line it up so it's shy of both the Z axis and the inseam of the leg. Now use a loop cut tool to add more vertices. Now you can use the little menu at the bottom left to indicate how many cuts. You want to make boxes, not rectangles. So just keep adjusting until you get a nice even shape that is big enough to fit around the side of the model. Now select each shape. Right click. Select subdivisions on the menu. With the little menu, you can plug in the number of subdivisions. 15 subdivisions should be good for the torso and 10 for the sleeves. Try to make the little squares on the sleeve the same size as the little squares on the torso. Hotkey C to circle select these four vertices. Scroll to change the size of the area you can select. Right click to exit the C select tool. F to fill in a plane. Continue all the way down the seam. If the armpit is not covered completely, then you can extend the sleeve to select the whole edge. Then E to extrude. Continue to fill in the planes. Box select G to adjust. Work on the leg to make even squarish planes. Then right click subdivide. Indicate 16 subdivisions or however many it takes to make the little leg boxes the same size as the little torso boxes. Hockey C to circle select these four vertices. Hold shift to deselect if you grab too many. Right click to exit the circle select tool. F to fill in the plane. Repeat, repeat, alt left click the extra edge, right click, delete. Box select the crotch. EX extrude to the side. Box select the edge of the sleeve and S to scale it. Hotkey O to use the proportional editing so that the other vertices are affected as well. Go to sculpt mode. Go to the drop down at the top right. Select the direction menu. Select positive X to negative X. Select symmetrize. Edit mode. Select X symmetry, top right corner. Select the edge. S with O proportional editing on to resize the leg. G to move. Make sure the plane extends beyond the leg of the model. Hotkey 3. A select all. E, Y to extrude and left click when you have the back half completely behind the model. It doesn't matter if it's a bit far. Go to this menu. There is an option to view vertices, edges, and faces. Select faces. Hotkey C, the faces of the leg holes. Right click out of the circle select. C, select the planes on the armhole. Right click off. Hotkey 9 to see the other side. 9 always flips any view to the other side. Hotkey 7 to see the top. Select the planes where you want the head hole. Right click delete. Hotkey 1. Vertex view. Select G with proportional editing to make a curved neckline. If you have a problem with exposed armpits, just grab the corner like this. Don't forget to apply transparency mode so the back is adjusted as well. Go back to the faces view. See select the arms and belly seam. Hotkey 3 and select the sides. Hotkey X, only faces. Tab into object mode. Select the man and go to the physics tab. Apply collision. 
Select your outfit. Apply cloth. For quality steps, do 12. In the cache tab, we can bake the simulation so that Blender doesn't have to render the simulation in real time. Don't apply that until you are happy with the simulation. Go to the Shape tab, Sewing, Spacebar to play the simulation, Spacebar to pause. It's too bulky. You can see the space between the model and cloth. There are ways to adjust this in the Physics tab, but it's finicky. Better to just scale it up. Put the timeline thingy at zero. Box select the man model and outfit. S10 to increase his size by 10 times. This way, if you need scale measurements of your outfit, you can just divide by 10. Now if we hit spacebar, it looks much better. Spacebar pause. The sleeves on the sky look a little short. That'll happen. As long as it's not baked, you can still adjust the outfit in edit mode. Cupa. If you need to, you can adjust the length of the bake. Otherwise, it's ready to be baked. This might take around five minutes. If something went wrong and your cloth simulation is going crazy, make sure your outfit is not passing through the man. On frame one, every edge and seam should be distinctly outside of the model. Now for the shading. Select the outfit. Right click. Shade smooth. Select the render viewport. G, Z, the light out of his arm. You can change the strength of the light with this green light bulb tab. G, Y to bring it forward. But we don't need the light, so you can turn it off in the outline. Also, the camera icon will turn it off in the final render. Go to the red world tab. Change the color to bright white. Go to the left corner menu of the timeline and change the viewport to the shader editor. Go to the red material tab. Select new material. The fastest way to make the shader look flat is to turn the emission up. A better way is to look at the shader editor and add a color ramp. Shift A and type in color ramp into the search bar. Connect color to surface. Hit the minus sign to get rid of one of the gradient sliders. Control C to copy the color ramp. Now select the man. Add a material. Control V to paste the color ramp into the shader editor. It might automatically plug itself into the already existing node. The shader will go pink. This indicates an error. Disconnect the red line and it should be fine. Now decide what color you want for the man and his outfit. Hit the swatch underneath to select a color. Let's work on the SVGs. This will throw lines around the model in the final render. Go to the Render Properties tab. Go to Color Management. Select Standard to get truer colors. Standard is best for graphic work. Filmic is used for realism. Select Freestyle to enable SVG. Go to View Layer Properties. Here you can see the line set. You can add and subtract lines. If we scroll, we see that we can indicate what aspect of the model will have a line. Usually contour and silhouette look very nice. We can also adjust the color under the color tab. Let's make the outfit a bit lighter so the line contrasts more. Finally, we have arrived at the render. Hotkey zero to see through the camera viewport or select the camera toggle at the right side. When we two finger slide on the trackpad, we bounce out of the camera. If we find a camera angle that we like, we can use Alt Command Zero to reorient the camera. But again, if we try to zoom out to frame the scene better, then we are bounced out of the camera. So let's try to fix this. Hockey N or manually pull out the menu on the right side. Go to View, then check Camera to View. Now we can move around and the camera will stay with us. To exit the camera, just hit hotkey zero again. Looks good. Go to output properties. Here we have our resolution. Let's indicate the name and location of our rendered animation. 
a parallel tutorial on the desktop. You can render in PNG, especially if you have alpha in your scene. Then you just have to pull together all the images in a video editing program. But today we'll use the file format FFmpeg video. This way we have an MP4 to work with. Under encoding, select MPEG4. Under video, the output quality should be high quality. Now let's see what we have by rendering a still image. Go to render, render image. Hmm, the line doesn't look great. Go to view layer properties. Let's try more lines. Render, render image. Not great, he looks sort of ridiculous. Let's just try contour. I think less is more, even though you can't really tell his front from his back. We're ready to render the animation. Render, render animation. This is the finished result, but it's a bit bright. So I made a background in Photoshop, and then in Premiere, I overlaid the video with the multiply transparency effect over the Photoshopped background. Now let's say you want to make a coat for this guy. It can get a bit tricky layering cloth simulations, so I suggest exporting this model as an OBJ. Whatever frame you select, the exported object will freeze the simulation in that position. That way you will have lifelike drapery without the cumbersome simulation. Then, if you import the object into a new project, you will no longer have the cloth simulation, you will just have a mesh. It will be much easier to add the next article of clothing. To do this, choose your favorite frame. Go to File, Export, Wavefront, name him and indicate the location where you want him. Export OBJ. And there he is on the desktop. 